Delta Tango Whiskey, thank you for a $5 super chat. I heard on UAV Tech that he put a capacitor on a 3.3 volt rail for filtering. Is that the same as putting a capacitor on the 3.3 volt pads? Yes, it is. Um, when they talk about the 3.3 volt rail um, or the 5 volt rail, that is electronics speak for, like, as you design a, a, a PCB, you'll have a 5 volt regulator. And then the output of that five volt regulator will be put onto a copper trace or a wire. And that trace will go to all of the five volt pads. So all of the five volt pads on a flight controller are fed from the same five volt regulator. And that is generically referred to as the five volt rail. Um, in my head, it goes back to a picture of a literal, like there, there were these benches, these electronics workbenches where you would literally have a rail on the back of the bench and you would plug or, or connect a regulator to it and it would have a certain voltage on it. And then you could just clip to the rail to get five volts, you know, anywhere you needed it. I, that's the picture that I have in my head. I don't know if that's literally the source of that that jargon. But um, yeah, what you would do to put a capacitor on the 3.3 volt rail is you would find a 3.3 volt pad and a ground pad and you would put the capacitor on the 3.3 volt and the ground pad. Paul Whittingham is, I don't even know what this question's about. I'm complaining about a fact that iFlight doesn't inform buyers which way around to place the LiPo on the quad. I mean, I must be missing something, Paul. Can we not just, I don't, I, uh, you can figure that out. Um, Mupshot says, I just bought the Mobilite 7 HD with a Walksnail VTX. The range is disappointing at best. Is there a firmware version ideal if I don't need sharing? Um, um, uh, well, the firmware that I think is best to use is 32.37.10. I feel like that one has pretty good performance. Uh, that's the one I would be on. Uh, are you sure you're at max output power? Yeah. Why can't I buy 4S motors for 6S battery and just limit them in beta flight? You can. You can. Um, a, a motor output limit of more than about 75% can be, can in, introduce problems like maybe increased risk of desync. But you could do a 66, you could buy 2400 kV motors, do a 66% motor output limit, and it'll work. People, some people, Ciati famously does that. Do you still do that, Ciati? I see you in the chat. He did it for over a year with no problems. There are some differences. It's not like you will get the exact same performance and efficiency as a 6S motor. So if you intend to fly 6S batteries, you should get 1700 kV, 18, 1900 kV, whatever the appropriate kV is. But if for some reason you have to do that or want to do that, you totally can. Mupshot, uh, on your Walksnail VTX, you're only seeing 25, 200, 500. Um, though that's correct. Uh, the 1S, I think it maxes at 350 or 450 milliwatts, but it shows as 500 in the menu. So if you set to 500, you should be at max power. I see some people in the Discord talking about getting the Flow State Blu-ray. That's so exciting. Uh... I'll take, I'll use that as an excuse to plug in. In case anybody's new here, no, that is the wrong freaking. <laughs> damn it. It's the wrong, it's the wrong damn. What is it? Not the best name for a, for a movie, I guess. There's more than one flow state. If you guys don't know about Flow State, the FPV drone documentary, uh, it is a documentary made by, uh, well, I say made by me and James Christensen. He did all the real work and I mostly just paid for him to fly around the world and uh, interview people. So I got an executive producer credit. So, but he did, it's really creatively speaking, it's all him. And uh, it's a full length featured documentary about uh, FPV. Uh, most of the interviews were done around the 2020 to 2021 time frame, so remote ID features heavily, but it's just a love letter to FPV. Um, if you watch it on one of these streaming platforms, you will get the 90-minute edit. Um, 
However, are these links too? Huh, interesting. Uh, you can also, if you have a Blu-ray player, you can get the full three hours of footage. It's like almost three hours on the Blu-ray. Uh, it was originally going to be three 40-minute episodes of like a, a series. And so James edited almost three hours of content. And then for reasons, most people didn't want to watch three hours of this stuff. So we created, we, James, created a 90-minute edit. And uh, that's what you get if you watch the streaming. But the additional content is currently only available on the Blu-ray. So you could pop out that old Blu-ray player and see. Anyway, a little plug there for that. Uh, Athix FPV is surprised Buckrinder didn't cuss the whole interview. Um, he did. Uh, if I remember correctly, there was some creative editing to make it look like Buckrinder didn't cuss so that we could get that, you know, the family rating. It's not rated, so I don't know why we didn't leave the cuss again. MJ asks, I'm from Europe, and I'm wondering, what is the problem with remote ID? Um, well, I clicked on the question, so I'll answer it briefly, even though I don't want to do too much more remote ID stuff. Just make the whole live stream about remote ID. The problem with remote ID is the cost and weight of the module, for one thing. Um, security and privacy implications. People being able to see where the pilot is. Uh, some people are concerned that that will result in uh, them being assaulted by people who don't want them, don't like drones. Uh, that's not entirely unreasonable. Uh, and uh, just general, general American dislike of the government getting up in our shit, which I think Europeans don't quite have as strong of a knee-jerk reaction to. But when your entire country was founded on the principle of shut up, go away, to, to the government, then that sort of is ingrained in your culture and your national mindset in a way that maybe Europeans don't share. Not that Europeans haven't had some revolutions in their time, but I think you, I think you understand what I mean. Um, um, is the Gap RC Cinelog 3.5 V2 still a good cinema for 2023? Um, I, Matthew, it's still good. Uh, I think some people would say to look at the Cinebot, especially if you plan to carry a heavier camera, but it's a good choice. One of the best, I think. Siadi, where are you at on the Cinelog 3.5? Siadi flies a lot of whoops. Hey, there's another question here. Will you ever review the Cinebot 30? Will I ever review the Cinebot 3.0? I don't, I don't, like, I don't know. I hesitate to review Cinewhoops because, like... I don't, they're, they're like, they're, they all seem the same to me. And if I can't, like, really tell the difference between them, then I don't know if I should be reviewing them. Like, why do you want to, like, specifically review the Cinebot 3.0? I don't know. I think I might have one. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, but maybe not. I go back and forth on what what products I should review. Siadi says, I don't really understand any of those prop guarded rigs. They're too dangerous around people, at which point just fly a non-guarded rig. Um, I mean, aren't the prop guards going to help a little bit if you like tap a wall? I mean, I don't think the prop guards really do a lot. Siadi also thinks that the guards aren't tall enough to slow it down enough for cinematic slow lines. Interesting. 